What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add and remove items from our tree view with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, in this video, we're going to look at adding and removing items from our tree view. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at our tree view thing here. So we've got this thing, we've got these headers, we can move them around. In this video, I want to show you how to add items. So we've got Steve, Steve likes bacon, we can add him, boom. How to remove items, if we click on this, we want to remove just one, we can do that. If we want to remove a couple, we can remove them all. If we want to do everything at once, we can click that and get rid of all of them. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head back over to our code and I'm in tree.py. And if you missed the first video of this little series here about the tree view, check the comment section below for a link to the playlist. So I'm using the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bop up the size of our app to 600 and let's, let's add, our, let's make our tree view a little bigger. So I'll add 20 there. I'll add 20 to this column. And I'll add 20 to that column just to space this out a little bit more. So, okay, let's come down here and uh, underneath where we packed this thing, let's create a frame that's going to hold that those three little boxes that we can add records. So I'm just going to call this add frame and this is going to be a frame and we want to put it in root. So let's go add underscore frame dot pack to pack this onto the screen, give it a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So now let's create three labels and then three entry boxes so that we can add a record to our tree view. So I'm just gonna call this NL for name label, and this will be a label. And we wanna put it in root and want the text to equal name. And then let's go NL.grid. We want this in row zero, column zero. So now we want to, let's add an ID and I'm gonna call this ID label IL, and it's gonna be a label. And we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal ID. And then we can go il.grid. And let's put this in row equals zero, column equals one. And then finally, let's go what? Toppings label, TL. And it's going to be a label. I want to put it in root. We want the text to equal topping. And we can TL.grid this guy, put it in row zero and column two. So now let's do uh, entry boxes and let's, I guess, comment this labels, right? So here, let's, uh, let's call this one a uh, name box, I guess. And this is going to be an entry widget. We want to put it in, oh, mistake. We don't want to put these labels in root. We want to put it in add frame. There we go. So this box also, we want to put it in the add frame frame. We want, oh, we don't have to put anything else but that. So now let's go name underscore box dot grid. We want to put this in row one and column zero. So one row down. And let me just copy this and let's paste it in a couple of times. This will be the ID box. And we want to put it in column one. And this will be the topping box. And we will put it in column two. So let's save this and run it just to make sure this is working. So Python tree.py. Pull this over. Okay, we've got our three entry boxes. It's a little sloppy, but we don't really care. This is just for example purposes anyway, uh, to see if this will work. So, okay, we've got this. So now let's create a button to add record. So close this back over to our code. Uh, let's go buttons and let's go uh, add record. And that's a button. We want to put it in. Let's just put this in root. We don't have to put it in that entry or in that uh, add frame frame because we're not going to put these like that. We'll just put them down below. So it doesn't really matter. So we'll just do this and we want the text to be add record. And let's give this a command of add record. Okay, so now we should pack this guy while I'm thinking about it add record dot pack. Now let's give this a pad Y of 20. So now let's create add record function. So that's define add record. So 
remember how we added things in the last video? We did like this. We used these things. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing. And basically, we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down here and add this. Now, instead of each of these things, right, we'll put in, we'll get the name box, ID box, or topping box. So let's just do that right now. So instead of the name here, we call namebox.get. And remember, that's a function. This one will be ID box dot get, and that's a function. And then finally, this one will be what was this one? Topping box dot get, and that's a function. So we also need to give it an ID. So remember, each one we give a sequential ID. So let's just use count because remember, up here, we use this count variable. And to use this, I'm going to make this global. So let's go global count right here. And remember, it starts at zero. And as we add these things in our loop, we're adding one to the count. So the last thing that will have been added will have been the last number. So here we can just go global count. And then instead of calling a specific IID, can just use this count variable here. So, OK, that will work. And that looks good. So we'll also need to increment our count. So let's go count plus equals one. OK, so we might also want to then clear those entry boxes, right? So let's go name.box.delete. And we want to delete from zero to end. And let me just copy this. So this is ID box. And this is topping box. And we don't want to put it here. We want to put it after all of this stuff. There we go. So let's comment this, uh, clear the boxes. OK, so OK, I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if that worked. So we can add Steve. Steve is, let's say, ID six. And Steve likes what? Mushroom pizza. We can add a record. Boom, Steve pops up. All right, so that's pretty easy. Uh oh, this one didn't get cleared. What did I do there? Topping, oh, I misspelled topping. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday. That happens. OK, so that works. So how do we now remove things from our tree view? Well, let's start out by uh, remove all. Let's just remove everything. So let's call this one remove all. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal remove all records. And let's give this a command of remove underscore all. Copy this. And then let's pack this guy onto the screen. So remove all dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of like 10 just to push it down a little bit. So, OK, we can come up here to our sort of functions section. And let's go remove all records. And let's define this as remove all. OK, so how do we remove everything from our tree view? Well, a lot of times we call the delete function. So like an entry box will be uh, entry box dot delete. And then like right here, you give it a range from zero to end. And you can't quite do that with a tree view. So a tree view is made up of a bunch of children's. Every sort of record or line or row, however you want to call it, in a tree view is sort of like a child of the parent tree view. So we have to loop through the all the records, all the children, and delete each one. So to grab each one, we call our tree, and ours is called my tree, and then we would go get underscore children. Now this will get a list of all the children in our tree view, right? So now we can just loop through this list. So let's go for a record in my tree dot get children and a colon there because this is a loop. And then we would just go my underscore tree dot delete and then record. So we're going to grab a list of all the, the records, right? And then we're going to delete them one at a time, looping through them all. So let's go ahead and save this and make sure that worked. Let's head over here, run this guy again. So here we can remove all records and boom, they all disappear. OK, pretty easy. So now what do we do if we want to just delete a specific one, just one? So like, let's run this again. Let's say, because we can click on one of these, right? 
So if we click on one of them and we want to delete just that one, how do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. Let's create a comment down here and call this remove one. And let's call this remove underscore one. And this is going to be a button and we want to put it in root. And we want the text to equal remove one selected. Something like that. We want to designate just removing one versus removing many that we've selected because you can select more than one if you want. So let's remove one selected and let's give this a command of remove underscore one. Okay. And now let's remove underscore one dot pack and give this a pad Y of like 10 just to push it down a little bit. And let's come up here to our function section and let's remove one selected. And so let's define this function. Now, in order to determine that something has been selected, we just call our tree. So my underscore tree dot selection. And this is a function. Now this will get a list of all of the things selected, right? If you just want one item, you can designate it as if it were a list. So we want the zeroth item selected because there's only going to be one item selected. And this is a list. And so lists start at zero. So we could just say, hey, delete this zeroth item. If we selected like five of them and we wanted to delete the last one, that would be four because it starts at zero, one, two, three, four, right? If we selected two items and we wanted to delete the second item, we would put a one there, right? So you can use this to select any specific one of a list of things that you've selected and highlighted in blue. In our case, we're just selecting one. So we just want the zeroth item selected, right? And now, we can we can add this to uh, a variable. I'm just going to call it X. Now we can delete this. So my underscore tree dot delete, just like we did earlier. But instead of passing record here, we just want to pass in X. So okay, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. So if we grab uh, Aaron here and we remove one selected, boom, she disappears. Now notice if we select two, and to do that, I'm holding the control key on my keyboard and selecting more than one uh, command button, I think if you're on a Mac. Now we've selected two, right? But our code says to delete the zeroth item, which is the first item, which should be Tim. So if we click this, it should just delete Tim and leave Bob. And it did, so, so sort of keep that in mind. So now what happens if we wanna like select several of them and delete them all? How do we do that? Well, we can look at that now, pretty simple. So let's come down here and let's go remove many selected. So let's go remove underscore many and that's going to be a button. <laughs> it's going to be in a root. The text is remove many selected or whatever. All right? let's give this a command equal remove underscore many. And let's copy this. And let's pack this guy on the screen. So remove many dot pack, give it a pad y of 10 to push it down a little bit. So let's come up here and remove many selected. So let's define this function. And now how do we remove many? Well, sort of the same thing, right? We're gonna my tree dot selection. But instead of picking a specific one, we can just leave it like this because this is a list of everything that's selected. So again, let's assign this to a variable. Now there's a bunch of things selected here. So we kind of probably want to loop through them all. If we just went, well, I don't know, maybe this will work. Let's see my tree dot delete. I don't think this is going to work. I think we have to loop through here and individually delete each item, but let's give it a try and see. Let's uh, go Bob, Aaron and Tim remove many selected does not work. I was correct. We need to actually loop through all of these things. So what we can do, is let's go for record in X, then bring this up. And instead of X, we want to delete record, right? So basic for loop that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And let's go Bob, Aaron and Mary. So John and Tim should be the only ones left. Click remove selected, boom, John and Tim are the only ones left. And that's all there is to it. So I know I went through those really fast, but they're pretty simple. So it shouldn't be too bad. You just got to do some looping 
And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.